So the theorem we're looking at is going to be let G be a connected graph of order at least three. If G is Eulerian, then every vertex of G is of even degree. Right, so before we even think about proving that or discussing what ex why exactly that actually works out, let's just ask a few questions regarding, let G be a connected graph. I should have actually highlighted the graph part, but the idea behind this is connected. So the connected part and the order of at least three part, why would you need those to discuss anything to do with Eulerian graphs? So maybe pause it and think about it for a second. And let's discuss it. So for a graph to have a closed trail in it, say you have two vertices, you have the edge situation. Because remember, we work with simple graphs most of the time. In this situation, can we actually have a closed trail? Now remember, a closed trail, your beginning and end vertices are the same. So say you start here. Can you go touch all the vertices, all the edges of your graph, and come back to this point without repeating any edges? No, right? So, but the moment you have three, you can possibly do it. It's, it's a possibility. Because you can go from there, you can go across, across, across. So the moment you have three vertices is actually a possibility. It's not a guarantee, but it is a possibility. And then you have a situation of being connected. So that's another aspect. So if you have a disconnected graph and you have this, say just this kind of like example, is there any way that you could guarantee that you have an Eulerian trail in this situation? And a, yeah, even just an Eulerian trail where it covers all the edges of the graph? No, right, because of the disconnect can cause issues. So one of the guarantees, well, for the possibility of an Eulerian graph to exist is the graph needs to be connected. You need to be able to have a, at least a walk from every arbitrary U vertice to every arbitrary V vertice to exist to even bring up the possibility of there being, you know, this restricted walk that exists. Okay, so just a consideration of all those facts and why that has to be there for Eulerian graph graphs to be there. Okay, so let's just rub this out now and get on to the proving of this. So what this is saying, it's saying that if G is Eulerian and G is also a connected graph of order at least three, then every vertex of G is of even degree. So the yellow is your A, your blue is your B, A is your B. And how how can this happen? So let's just think back to that, you know, that basic example that we did where we had your A, your B, your C, and your D, and we had this kind of arrangement. And then we're like, okay, we can go from, in this case, for example, this doesn't have an Eulerian graph in it. But let's just think about the concept of just an Eulerian trail or walk. We could go B to C, C to D, D to B, D to A, D to C kind of a situation. So this had an Eulerian trail. And remember, an Eulerian trail is a less strict version of a Eulerian graph. So what we're going to look at here is going to be also represented in what we're going to see later on. But the idea behind this is, when you look at this, you have, it's going in here, and it's going out, because that's what's required. 
again, it's going in here and then it's going out. In here and it's going out here. In here and it's going out. But remember, this is an Illyrian trail, this isn't an Illyrian graph. Why is it not an Illyrian graph? Because it does not begin and end at the same spot. So now you think of, okay, let's look at an Eulerian circuit for realsies, and we have the situation. Yes, I'm keeping it a very basic situation where we have A, B, C, and D. Now, if you look here, you can go from A to B, B to C, C to D, D to A again. And now you can see it even clearer. So this one has, it has in and has, well, it has out and it has in. And that's a degree of two. This one has in and it has out. That is a degree of two. Similarly here and, you know, over here. Now, if you look at the difference between them, this had a degree two. This one actually had a degree three. This had a degree two. This had a degree three. So when you look at an Eulerian circuit versus an Eulerian trail, an Eulerian trail can have, you know, vertices of a degree, whereas your Eulerian circuit, just by virtue of the fact that it needs to begin and end at the same place, it doesn't have that situation where, you know, you can bypass everything. And because you're not going to be able to, well, you won't, just stop randomly at a vertex. So here we, with the Eulerian trail, we started at that vertex B, but we never came back to it. And we stopped at, you know, we went through the process, we did that approach, we stopped at D. The beginning and end there added that extra degree to it. So instead of being degree two, it was an added extra degree. And that's because it stopped at those points. So with your Eulerian circuit, you begin and end at the same place. So because you begin and end at the same place, that number that back, you know, what we saw there is the plus ones with the Eulerian trail, that is actually built into, you know, just this degree two situation. But you can have a situation where, you know, you go through a vertex more than once. So you can have a situation where you come into the vertex, you leave the vertex. And you're going to come back into the vertex. But again, you're going to leave the vertex. Because the only one, you know, your beginning and end point are going to be the same. You don't have that situation happening like that one over there. So now we're going to write that into theorem notation or proof notation, actually. Not even notation. Proof form. So let's go with that. So we say, okay, let C be an Eulerian circuit. So we're going to prove this directly. Let C be Eulerian circuit in that graph. Then by its definition, we know that all the edges of G are in C. And if all the edges of C are in G, then all the vertices of G are in C. Right, and then we just go through the process. So we start the vertex at just some arbitrary V, right? So we start the circuit at an arbitrary vertex V. Well, technically not fully arbitrary because you may only have one form of Eulerian circuit. So at a vertex V. And then you're going to be like, okay, you leave V. And when you do that, one edge is contributing to its degree. Okay. Then you're going to go all the way around your circuit, basically, and you're going to end up with another edge, the, the like final edge basically coming to it, contributing another one. So on return to V, to close your circuit, 
another edge contributes the plus one. So again, that's the situation over here where we start at A, we move on there, so that's the first edge. It continues its circuit, and then finally there's an edge that closes the circuit. So that's what we've just discussed there at the moment. Okay, then we say, okay, each time a vertex is entered via an edge in C, another edge has to be utilized to leave it. So that is looking in context to all of these here. So you have your B, you come into it, that's that edge that comes into it, that's the edge that leaves it. So it's going to always be the case. So let's write that down. So each time a vertex is entered via an edge in C, another edge is utilized to leave it. Therefore, contributing, there's a value true contributing to the vertex degree for every enter and leaving. So that means that every time that you have a vertex appearing in your circuit, it's going to contribute by a multiple of two. Because again, like in this situation, it had one entering and one leaving, and then something happened in the circuit, blah, 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 kind of a situation, and then it had an enter, and then it had a leaving. So there'll be multiples of that too. So every vertex is a multiple of degree 2. And well, if it's a multiple of degree 2, it is even. And that is the one we done. So one of the things you can note is if G is Eulerian, then every vertex of G is going to be of even degree. So one way that you can show that a graph is not Eulerian, because remember when you have A goes to B, not A, uh, not B, sorry, not B implies not A. So now we can be like, well, if there is a vertex of odd degree, an Eulerian graph won't necessarily exist. Well, won't exist. So now you can actually determine how a graph is not Eulerian utilizing this theorem. Okay, so the next, next theorem we're going to look at is basically you have a connected graph G has an Eulerian circuit well, no, let's, let's be fully accurate here. A connected graph G with at least an order of three. So of order at least three has an Eulerian circuit if and only if all of its vertices have even degree. Okay, so previously we had this situation where we said, okay, let G be a connected graph of order at least three. If G is Eulerian, then every vertex of G is of even degree. Now we're saying that it is not just uh, A goes to B, but B also goes to A. So the converse does exist. So let's just write this in the mathematical notation so you are aware of it. You can say, let G be a connected graph of order at least three, then G is Eulerian. You use the double arrows for all the elements of the vertices set of G the degree of V is even. Okay, so we're not going to prove this one. You're welcome to go try and prove it. It is doable at your level. But let's just go through some more theorems at the moment. So another thing that we can have is that 
an undirected graph has at least one Eulerian walk. If and only if it is connected and has two or zero vertices of odd degree. So I've already kind of explained that when we were doing the previous theorem, where I drew like the Eulerian trail, and then I showed you that it had, in that situation, two vertices of degree three. So this is where that comes into play. It says you have an undirected graph, has at least one Eulerian walk, if and only if. So again, it goes backwards. So take a moment to try and write this in the same kind of mathematical notation style as we did there. So if and only if, again, that sort of arrow, it is connected and has two or more vertices of odd degree. So this is, again, like a weaker form. So the previous one, if we had an Eulerian circuit, if and only if all the vertices have even degree. But we can say that it has an Eulerian walk if and only if it is connected and has two or more or zero vertices of odd degree. If it has zero vertices of odd degree, well, it has an Eulerian circuit or well, trail in it. And, well, no, it actually has a full Eulerian circuit in it. And, you know, they're just by default, if it has an Eulerian circuit, it has an Eulerian walk. If it has two vertices of odd degree, that's that example that we gave there where we, we spoke about when we have this graph. And the idea being you would have your odd degree vertices at your beginning and at your end. Okay, then we have one more theorem that we look at, or theorem statement that we look at, and it says you have a connected graph. G has an Eulerian walk. but no Eulerian circuit if and only if, and again, I'm using the short notation there, I'm adding a lot of extra notation today, if and only if, it has exactly two vertices of odd degree. So, Firstly, if you just looked at the first two theorems here, so if you just looked at, let's just choose a different color, this theorem and this theorem. So you had a connected graph G of order at least three has an Eulerian circuit if and only if all the vertices have even degree. Then you had a situation of an undirected graph has at least one Eulerian walk if and only if it is connected and has two or zero vertices of odd degree. And we spoke about that fact that if it has zero vertices, of odd degree. It technically falls in the Eulerian trail situation, with, well, the closed Eulerian circuit situation. So we now narrow it down and we have a theorem that says, okay, you have a connected graph, you know it has an Eulerian walk, but no Eulerian circuit, if and only if it has exactly two vertices of odd degree. And that's just taking away the zero vertices of odd degree to show that it only has an Eulerian walk in it. 